Hey, I'm Professor Perez. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we are going to work on the air intake manifold problem. So let's get started right there. First, let's bring in a Cartesian coordinate system. In this problem, we are dealing with an area that is enclosed by the line x equal natural log of 1 half, x equal natural log of 2, f of x equals e to the x, and the x-axis. Now, each individual piece of our manifold has a volume that can be found by summing up semicircular cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis whose radii is equal to f of x. Yeah, I know, we need a visual, so here it comes. Notice that the radii are all equal to f of x. Now here's a picture of an individual piece of our manifold. Here's a view from the bottom. Now these two pieces are going to be assembled at the front to redirect airflow around this obstruction. And there's a picture of the result. Notice there are two semicircular inlets and two semicircular outlets. First we're asked to find the area of one individual inlet. In order to do this, we must look at the ordered pair natural log of 2, comma, f of natural log of 2, where f of natural log of 2 represents the inlet radius. To evaluate f of natural log of 2, we have e to the natural log of 2, which is 2, and note that our dimensions here are feet. Therefore, our inlet radius is 2 feet. To find the area of a semicircular inlet, we use the equation 1 half pi r squared, replace r with 2 feet, and we get this result 2 pi feet squared. Next, we will find the area of a semicircular outlet. To do so, we look at the ordered pair natural log of 1 half, comma, f of natural log of 1 half, where f of natural log of 1 half represents the radius of an individual outlet. So to find this radius, we need to evaluate f of natural log of 1 half, which is e to the natural log of 1 half, which ends up being 1 half, and that's 1 half of a foot. Therefore, to find the area of the outlet, we use the equation 1 half pi r squared, replace r with 1 half, and that gives us an area of pi over 8 feet squared for the outlet. Moving on. Next, we're asked to find the volume of the entire manifold. But before we go on, let's review finding volume using disks. Recall that the volume of a disk that is perpendicular to the x-axis can be found by the equation pi r squared delta x. In this case, our radius is f of x. Therefore, we can replace r with f of x. But notice that each individual piece of our manifold was generated by semicircular cross-sections. So to find the volume of one individual piece, we have to sum up half of a disk. And therefore, to find the volume, we introduce the half. But remember, there are two separate pieces, so we have to multiply by two. So actually, we are summing up entire disks. And here is the integral that represents the volume using disks. Notice f of x is replaced with e to the x. So 1 half times 2 is 1. We can factor out the pi, which is a constant. That gives us this integral. Integrating gives us this result. Substituting in our limits of integration gives us this. Now notice in our next step that 2 natural log of 2 equals natural log of 4. Also, 2 natural logs of 1 half does equal natural log of 1 fourth. Now, evaluating the terms inside this bracket gives us the result 4 subtract 1 fourth, which then gives us the result volume equals pi over 2 times 15 over 4, which gives us our final volume of 15 pi over 8 feet cubed. That's the volume of the entire inside of the manifold. Now finally, we're asked to find the entire surface area of the manifold. 
Now don't forget, there are two separate pieces. So let's begin by finding the surface area of one individual piece on the top. For this, we are going to use the area of a surface of revolution equation. But because we're only doing half a revolution, we will introduce the half. Now, on the bottom side of each individual piece, there are two of the enclosed area that we defined at the beginning of the problem. So let's go back and look at that area. And notice there are two on the bottom. And there is the integral that represents the area of this enclosed region. Now we're ready to write our equation for the total surface area. Let's begin with the surface area on top. Remember, we have two individual pieces, but each individual piece was only half of a revolution, so there's the half there, and there is our integral that represents the area of surface of revolution. Notice f of x is replaced with e to the x, and f prime of x is also replaced with e to the x, because f prime of x does equal e to the x. Now, to sum up the bottom of each individual piece, remember there's two enclosed regions on the bottom, but there's two pieces, so we have to multiply by two again. So actually there's a total of four enclosed regions on the bottom of both individual pieces. And there's the integral that represents the enclosed region right there. So, now we are ready to make our final calculation. We're out of time. That means you get to do it on your own. We'll see you all again soon.